Hey guys, Josh Collins here, and uh, we're doing this series with REO Success TV about your website. Now, last week I talked to you about some statistics on you know what, why you need a website, why it's important to your business, and this week I'm going to talk to you about another element of having a good website and that is making it simple. Now simplicity is just not, it's not just a buzzword, it's actually one of the most important aspects of your website. And a lot of people get this wrong because their website will just do a hundred or you know two hundred different things. They'll have all kinds of stuff and what happens is the user doesn't know or the person coming to your site doesn't know what to do when they get there. So here's going to, I'm just going to give you some tips that I like to use when we're building a website, when we're looking at other people's websites in order to help you make sure your website's efficient and is simple enough for your users to know what to do when they get on your site. Because if they don't know what to do, they're not going to stay on your page very long. They might not figure out who you are and what you have to offer. And they're just going to go and check somewhere else. So the, the key here is you have to keep your web design simple and straightforward and you can't allow it to get cluttered. Now clutter is just one of the biggest issues. Whether you call it clutter or busyness or whatever, you see websites all the time. They just have a thousand different things on them. And you know, you'll see a page just full of links or you know, you'll have a menu bar to the left that has like 25 things in it. Or you'll have a menu bar across the top that'll have like 10 links and every time you put your mouse over one then like eight more things come up. And you need to avoid that. The other thing that's really important about simplicity is to have a really simple color scheme. Now, a color scheme that's too loud and bright actually can make people, you know, proven that it makes people kind of nervous or, you know, they're just like, oh man, I don't want to be on the site anymore. But if, you're, if your color scheme is too drab, then it makes people feel like your business doesn't have very much life to it. So, you know, one way or the other, you're, you're just off on the wrong end. What you need to do is to pick a, a simple web design I'm uh, sorry, a simple color scheme that has some life to it, but it's not overpowering and all the colors should complement each other. So here's what I like to tell people if you're trying to rate your website uh, to see whether it's simple enough or not. Um, here's the way I sum it up. If your website is simple enough, people know what to do when they get there and they're happy to stay to do it. So if you want them to look at your listings or if you want them to buy your product, if they don't know that when they get onto your site, they will never be able to actually get to the point of buying it. And if the color schemes aren't right, they may get the wrong opinion about your business before they even get to that question that you're trying to ask them, which is, do you need my product? So um, the other thing is, in order for you to have a good, simple website, you need to know what its purpose is. And again, going back to the idea that some people will just have 25 or 30 different purposes on their website. Um, those websites are not effective. So here, you know, it, it's it kind of goes back to that old thing that, you know, you have to just keep things simple. If you represent buyers, then talk about how you represent buyers. Don't talk about how your buyers and sellers and short sales and REOs and property management and, you know, that you're, oh, you're also a title agent and you can also do their mortgage form. Those kind of things are going to push people away. They may get suspicious of you, or it may just not communicate the message that you want to hear. So what I tell people to do is let's say you specialize in more than one thing. Let's say you do, uh, you do REO, you do buyer agency, and you're a short sale expert. Rather than putting that all on one page, create three separate landing pages. Now, a landing page is just a basic, very simple site. Uh, or web page that only talks about one point of your business. Now you may have 10 different points to your business, but your landing page is only going to talk about one of them because that way it's simple enough for people to understand what you want them to do. If you're trying to get the point across that you're an excellent buyer's agent, then you know your buyer's agent uh, website or landing page will actually tell them that and they'll get the point. So use landing pages to get that point across and also use it to test your message because you know, you can create a landing page that has your buyer's agent message on it, and then maybe you just tweak that message just a little bit and put up two landing pages. Now you can actually track which one is going to get you the most business, whether it's message A or message B. 
So I always recommend that real estate agents have separate landing pages for each, each aspect of their business. So next week, uh, we're going to talk about the headline, the art of the headline, or, or how you write a good headline for your website. And you're definitely not going to want to miss it because there's more to your site than just making it simple, although that's very, very important. There's other things that you have to take into consideration. And we're going to go through those things uh, one at a time, uh, you know, through, through each blog post that we make, just to give you that information. So check back on our site, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you then.